Hi everyone, I'm Ajit Khan, a senior DevOps engineer and a Dami instructor and also a community builder of AWS. In this video, we are going to learn about AWS Global Accelerator. It is an AWS service. So first of all, we will see what is the issue we face if we do not use AWS Global Accelerator. And then we will see what we can do with AWS Global Accelerator. After that, we will also do the hands-on. We will create a Global Accelerator, but that will be in the second part of this video. So without waiting much, let's get started. So first of all, let us see what is the problem we can face if we don't use Global Accelerator. Suppose our application, which is present on EC2 instances and in front of it, there is an application load balancer. This application is getting served from various locations around the globe. So users are around the globe and they are accessing our application. The request from the client may reach to our application by going through different networks and different hops in between. Each hop introduces some or the other latency and also introduces some risk. So let us understand this through a diagram. This is our AWS region. And here we have our service and application running. Suppose the client is on the left hand side and it is trying to send a request which is uh, displayed as yellow in color. So this request will go through different network like A, B, C, D and ultimately it will reach to our application. As you can see, it is going through many hops and networks, so it will take time, as well as there might be some security risk in between the network. This is introducing latency and network risk. Now with Global Accelerator, what we can do, we can add AWS Global Accelerator, which will remove this inefficiency and it will leverage the global AWS network, resulting in improved performance. So our request from the user will not go through different network and hops in between. Let us see how it works in terms of diagram. So here are application on the right hand side and on the left hand side, it's our client and the client has its so local ISP. Now there are many edge location of AWS present around the world. So with the help of global accelerator, we will have some or the other edge location which will receive our request and it will directly forward the request to our application through AWS network. It will not go through public network, it will go through AWS network itself. So there are no hops and multiple networks involved in between. This will result in less risk in the network and also the performance will be quite improved. Let us now understand the concept of AWS Global Accelerator. So we have a public ALB here in AWS, which is serving our web application. We have users across the globe from Europe, America, India. So when someone is accessing our web application from America, it will pass through this network and it will be a public network and there will be multiple hops in between. So what AWS Global Accelerator is doing, it is routing the request to our application through an internal network, which is internal to AWS. So this network will be fast and it will be a direct network like there will not be many hops in between and it will use global accelerator service so the global accelerator uses anycast ip so there are two types of ips unicast and anycast unicast ip means one server holds one ip address and anycast ip means multiple server can hold the same ip address and route to the nearest one when a request is raised from america the edge location will find out the nearest IP to route traffic to the ALB and it will give the request to that IP. So Global Accelerator is using Anycast IP. The flow of traffic is such that the request will go to the edge location and it will be redirected to our application. This is the concept of Global Accelerator. Let us see the advantages of Global Accelerator. So it works on Elastic IP, ALB, NLB, EC2 instances. You can create a global accelerator and the global accelerator can forward the request to an Elastic IP or to an ALB, NLB or directly to the EC2 instances. So if you want, you can also remove ALB in between, add EC2 instances. But it depends on use cases like what's your requirement. But yeah, global accelerator supports all these things. And it helps us to accelerate latency sensitive applications. It also simplifies global traffic management. It helps in disaster recovery thanks to health checks because it also have health checks which regularly checks your endpoint and if it is unhealthy, it will direct the traffic to the healthy one. It improves resiliency and availability. It protects your application from DDoS protection by using AWS Shield. So AWS Shield is another AWS service and Global Accelerator can be integrated with AWS Shield. Let us see the use cases. 
So use cases is also important for any AWS exam because the AWS exams are based on scenarios. Question has a certain scenarios and if there is any question related to global accelerator, you will see a particular scenario and you need to answer accordingly. So let us understand the scenario in which it can be helpful. So one scenario is single region application. It helps single region application by improving latency and availability for single region application. And it also helps in multi-region application. It can simplify the traffic by routing the traffic to multi-region application. Multi-region storage. When you have S3 multi-region replication, Global Accelerator can help you to direct the traffic to the right location and within AWS and the traffic will go through AWS network and it will help you to save the cost as well. It can also help in real-time communication, so running communication as a service and voice over IP on AWS, so you can also use Global Accelerator in this kind of scenario. Another use case is gaming. So if you want enhanced networking performance for your gaming application, then you can use Global Accelerator. So you can remember all these terminologies and understand the use case, and it will be really helpful in your exam. Now you must be wondering, CloudFront is also used as location and it also helps you to reduce latency. So what is the difference between CloudFront and Global Accelerator? So let's see what is the difference between these two. So CloudFront can handle HTTP protocol whereas Global Accelerator can handle both HTTP and non-HTTP based protocols such as TCP and UDP. CloudFront uses edge location to cache while Global Accelerator uses edge location to find the nearest path. So CloudFront is serving cached content and Global Accelerator is not caching anything. It is just transferring the request to the nearest AWS path. Next thing is CloudFront charges on the basis of HTTP request and data transfer while Global Accelerator charged as fixed hourly fee and also for the data transferred. So there is a fixed fee associated with Global Accelerator as well and it's per hour. Another difference is CloudFront uses sets of dynamically changing IP address. So CloudFront can have variety of IP address and it can change. And Global Accelerator provides you two static IPs, which is the Anycast IPs. So these are the difference between CloudFront and Global Accelerator. I hope you now have a clear understanding of CloudFront and Global Accelerator based on these differences. So this was all about the concept of Global Accelerator. Now in our next video, we are going to show you a real hands-on where you will see two instances in two different region and we will create a Global Accelerator and the Global Accelerator will point to two AWS instances in different region and we will also demonstrate failover and we will show you how Global Accelerator is able to transfer request to the nearest location by changing our location through VPN. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Do like the video and subscribe the channel. Thank you.